Alrighty, I'll, I don't know how much I'm going to talk about uh, in this video. It's primarily um, a thing that I'm eventually going to like really, I think I've mentioned before, solidify and uh, like write it down and stick with it about how to create core HQs, how long it takes to make core HQs, what they do and so on and so forth. Um, like I said again, man, I'm just doing, doing what I can for myself. Um, that's that. I'm not dissing the, like the rule. And I would, if I was going to play with somebody, I would play it. Like I said, buy the book. Anyways, part of the thing that I'm doing here is I'm trying to. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see this here, but Bruce Elaf's back in town. Um, okay, yeah, I will do it on a side note here. So think about that. And this was the executive decision I was talking about a few days ago in Charles Latour's. Um, uh, one of his videos, uh, I was uh, commenting in it, um, where he said that he had made a made an, an executive decision concerning his uh, graveyard um, s scenario thing, which is wicked. Oh my God! Anyways, yeah. Uh, okay, let's get back to this. So, technically, Brusilov is has to um, take orders from Anatoly Rosenshield. Anatoly Rosenshield is newly appointed to the Third Army because um, um, uh, Ruski, um, Anton, is it Anton Ruski? No, it's Anton von Salsa. Who the hell is Ruski? What's his first name? Um, anyways, he's been fired. Uh, and then Anton um, Rosenschild, um, Anatoly, sorry, Anatoly Rosenschild was brought in. Now think about this. So he's had a double promotion. He used to be just a freaking division commander. And then he became a corps commander of Special Corps 1, way the hell over there, in S uh, SE1 to bring in the supplies for First Army to Renin Camp because of that big brouhaha cock up. Um, so technically, Brusilov is taking orders from him. And technically, Brusilov, in, in a weirdo way, is a core HQ. Oh my god, the irony, which you're about to find out in a minute. So, Anatoly Rosenshield doesn't feel too... He's got no beef against Brusilov. He's not, never done anything against him. And also, do you think it would be... How would you feel about being doubly promoted, like in about a month or a month and a half, and start telling... Um, Alexei Brusilov, what the hell to do? No, thank you. So, and he's also got enough freaking stuff to deal with, for crying out loud. He's got a massively long front. So what I've decided to do for part of the narrative and whatnot is say, you know what, Brusilov, I've got enough stuff to do. It's not on the books. But you go do what you want to do. Take your remaining... Remember, these these were all, all these... That's the 4th Rifles uh, Brigade. Uh, they were, these guys are all the actual true remnants of the 8th Army. So now, ba -ba, they're back into the 8th Army land and everything. So who knows, maybe they could be some wacky, weird Brzezilov uh, offensive in my world uh, at some point again. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I love this stuff. Anyways, what this is coming down to, which is I find is the irony about Core HQs, is um, yet again, so this I'm also trying to draw the... Um, the Austro-Hungarians, I guess Austro-Germans, I should say, um, draw, like trying to draw them away. Like, remember, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about um, a few, like a few turns. For, like, I'm thinking January 1915, man. We have to get ready for that type of stuff. Also, I'm not doing it the way uh, the rules are, which is, uh, I think it's any combat. Uh, or any infantry unit or whatever that moves through an enemy uh, um, rail line hex makes it inoperable. I'm not doing it that way. I think it's, cr well, sir, I shouldn't say words like that's too, a bit too strong. Uh, I disagree with that. So what I'm going to do is you have to, as a player for myself, obviously I'm just doing it myself, is I have to, uh, each side would have to declare, by the way, we're going to make this hex uh, inoperable. And uh, you can only do, uh, it cannot be used in conjunction with column movement um, and it um, can only be done uh, only one hex side uh, one sorry one rail line hex can only be come inoperable by a um, uh, any um, combat infantry unit not a replacement because it's not combat um, 
just one hex and you would have to declare it during your movement. Okay, I'm going to make that one, whatever. Um, and engineers can do all three of theirs because, I mean, they know how to blow, you know, do things properly is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, I'll see how that goes. But um, so that's what the Russians are starting to do now. So that's what they did actually for here. Well, they're not going to, they did this one. And there's one over here too. They did so they've they've moved back and they're going to try to um, draw some. They got nothing here, no supplies, nothing. I know that. They're just trying to draw some of the pressure away from, uh, draw some of the attention away from the poor freaking Third Army over here, man. Uh, and we're going to give up this spot here, this rail line. They can have it, whatever. But we're also going to start uh, destroying rail as much as possible here. And uh, fall back to this, uh, I think that's a mosquito. Potentially just a normal fly, so I'll leave it alone. Um, uh, move back to this railhead here. Uh, this is where the kicker is, the irony is the fact that I would love to have a core HQ <laughs> to help these guys out or at least direct the direct uh, traffic, but uh, it's, I don't have it. And technically I could make one, I think. Uh, just just make it appear but I, I just can't see that happening it's just too much infrastructure that just uh, it's not just like you know okay by the way here's an envelope and off you go uh, as we know there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there so if it can start doing like mounting attacks and supplying stuff if it has it whatnot so forget it uh, I'll have to figure that out later um, there's some other things that I have to get prepared for the grand campaign stuff. Um, it's difficult sometimes. I'm having a hard time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I am having a hard time. Some uh, do the fact that I, I, like I said, I've called it before. I, I, I keep my, I look my, uh, move my head up, and it's I just see this uh, torrent of information coming towards me, and I'm trying to, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to drown in it, basically. So I just keep, I put my head down and I just drink a little bit at a time and then put my head up, I guess, you know, every once in a while to see where I'm coming or going. Um, that's about it. But I can just say this. Um, there are more times now that I'm getting towards the economic, uh, I'm playing around either in my head or, or I'm reading about it type of stuff and, you know, making more notes, which is freaking amazing. Um, I also have to talk a little a bit later about the uh, Opal Cheney, uh brigades converting to divisions. I think I figured out how I'm going to do it. Um, well, I'll talk about it very quickly right now. Uh, I, I saw the way uh, I'll, I'll reread it again. This the problem. So the two main things I'm, look, I'm reading up right now is uh, or getting towards is artillery. And, oh, shoot, what was the second one? Um, hold on here. Shoot, was it supply? It'll come to me again. Why don't I write these flipping things down? That was the other thing, too. I've got so many, like, uh, like a bazillion other things that I want to, like, you got to remember, like, I just, it drives me nuts that I'm letting, letting other things slide, too, like, for the narrative and whatnot and the crafting. And I'm like, oh, my God, I still want to do, like, the, the transfer film and stuff like that. Oh, there's just so, I'm like, calm down, Chris. Yet again, it's like, head up. But also, um... I can't let these those things slide. I've got to kind of document them somewhere on a whiteboard or somewhere, um, that type of stuff. But um, what the heck was it? Anyways, I guess I'll, I'll figure it out at, at some point. Um, this has just been, yeah, this has just been a spectacular times um, trying to come up with this, but it's still, um, oh, what am I, yeah, I would say that's more of a fly, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't hear it buzzing, mind you. I've got my uh, headphones on, so I wouldn't know. Uh, that's it. Um, there's going to be a lot more. It's only going to be head f uh, overheads or the camcorder right now. I destroyed the um, the mobile phone, so um, uh, that's that. And I hope you're having a good time. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to post this or whatever. But uh, I just want to really start, uh, well, what can I say? Uh, it's, look, man. Uh, I just, yeah, I want to really, like, get back into this properly, but, um, 
I mean, I spend 99.9% .9 of my time getting up in the morning. Like, there's even times I'm like, oh my God, well, as if, but I'm just saying. But, um, you know, like, let's say if I ever ended up getting, let's say, in a romantic or whatever, like, part of the, I'm, well, I wouldn't, but because of the first thought in my head is like, oh my God, this may detract from, you know, unless I guess the person is like really into this and um, actually would be really good at writing or that would be wicked. Um, yeah. Okay, that's it. See ya. I'll turn this thing off. Hope you're having a good time.